the future of nursing, leadership change, advancing health, and how removing barriers to nursing practice and care increases access for consumers and advances a culture of health. Andrea is a Senior Strategic Policy Advisor at the Center to Champion Nursing in America at AARP. About six months ago, she returned to work on the Campaign for Action from the American Nurses Association where she was Director of Health Policy. Formerly full-time faculty at the School of Nursing of the George Washington University, she continues as an adjunct professor teaching health policy and population health. Andre is also a nationally certified family nurse practitioner, is past president of the Nurse Practitioner Association of the District of Columbia, and practices at a retail health clinic system on occasional weekends. Her PhD and MPH degrees were earned at Columbia University, where she was funded public policy fellow. Please join me in welcoming Andrea. Okay, can I have a show of hands? Who's familiar with the future of nursing leading change advancing? Ah, oh, good. Okay, so I'm preaching to the choir and for the students you're going to become familiar with the uh, future of nursing uh, report. Um, good afternoon and thank you for everything that you're doing to implement the recommendations and that you will do to implement the recommendations. So it's been six years since the campaign was first launched to implement the recommendations, and Virginia was here from the beginning. And our goal is a healthier America through leading change and advancing health, and today I'm gonna probably focus more on the advancing health portion of the Future of Nursing report. There's five areas of focus. I'm gonna give you an update of where uh, Virginia and the other 50 action coalitions are. And I'm gonna talk about uh, our exciting initiative on the culture of health. As a reminder, the campaign's five major areas of focus are advancing education transformation, removing barriers to practice and care, leveraging nursing leadership, promoting diversity, and fostering interprofessional collaboration. As far as education progress, the number of students enrolled in an RN to BSN program has increased 69% since the Future of Nursing report, and the number of nurses with a BSN or higher degree is gradually increasing. We've made great strides in academic progression state progress in removing barriers to practice. The campaign is working to expand access to care by maximizing the use of nurses and removing outdated laws, regulations, and policies that prevent nurses, APRNs, and RNs from practicing to the full extent of their education and training, and we're making steady progress. This map shows progress in removing barriers to nurse practitioner practice and care. And um, you can see, oh, I forgot to tell you, the handout successes, okay, you, that also uh, lists the eight states that have made progress. You can see Maryland made progress um, in 2015. There's a legislative hearing today in West Virginia. Uh, we're hopeful that they're gonna make some progress in removing barriers, and I'm not giving up hope on Virginia. <laughs> and I'd be happy to talk to the nurse practitioners about, about this. You know that uh, AARP uh, Virginia has got you back and uh, working very hard. AARP, uh, show of hands, any, any besides me, any AARP members? Woohoo! Uh, ARP of uh, Virginia is working really hard to remove um, barriers to practice and care because ARP sees it as um, a way to help caregivers, uh, pa our patients and our families, because we ne we need access to care. So that's that's been a been a fabulous um, partnership. Leadership progress. Nurses provide an important perspective in decision making from the boardroom to our communities. That's why the campaign is working to prepare the next generation of nurses to lead system change. 
We're working to get more nurses who represent the largest segment of frontline workers appointed to hospital and health system boards. And I'd like to call your attention to this slide, which is the Nurses on Boards Coalition. And the goal is for 10,000 nurses by 2020. Um, it's kind of early, it's only 747. I, I, probably it's updated since I've made the slides. But um, uh, uh, the American Nurses Association is, is a leader in uh, m moving nurses on boards, and we particularly want nurses on community boards. We want nurses on school boards. We want nurses on boards of health, all, all of the areas that um, we've been talking about today. The Virginia Action Coalition is a leader in nursing leadership. Uh, Virginia's innovative program to identify 40 emerging nurse leaders under the age of 40 has been implemented by at least five other states. Arizona, Arkansas, Idaho, Nebraska, and Tennessee also have 40 under 40 programs. Keep up the good work, keep up the young, the young leaders. We've made some progress in diversity. The campaign and our partners are also working to recruit and prepare the nursing profession to provide culturally competent care in a variety of settings to an aging and more ethnically diverse population with more chronic illnesses. And I'm sure you've heard that by 2043, our minority populations will compromise the majority of our population. So we need to make sure that our profession reflects the people we serve and that all nurses Nurses deliver culturally competent services in all settings. So we've seen some progress made in schools of nursing, but we need to recruit and mentor more diverse nursing students and especially nursing faculty. And this is an um, infographic from the state of Washington. Uh, a majority of the the state of Wisconsin, I'm sorry. A majority of the action coalitions already have or plan to partner with minority nursing organizations and associations, create a diversity manual of best or promising practices, and develop a toolkit for ethnic minority recruitment of faculty and Virginians, uh, faculty and students. Uh, this slide is interprofessional collab. Collaboration. I, don't want to talk, I want to talk about collaboration in the good sense of the word, not uh, mandated <laughs> collaboration. Uh, we need to promote a team-based approach to education and practice to improve quality and coordination of healthcare. But a team-based approach does not mean only physician-led teams. Patient-centered care is key. Patients need to be in the center of interprofessional collaboration. Again, Virginia is a leader. The Virginia Evolve program is an example of interprofessional collaboration that will benefit patients. So as I said, it's been six years since the Future of Nursing report, and the, as the campaign completed its fifth year, the Institute of Medicine took a look at the impact the report has had on the field of nursing and beyond, with the campaign being one driver of change. And that's the other handout on your, uh, by your seats. It's the uh, four-page handout, which is the report in brief. And this handout is assessing progress on the Institute of Medicine report, The Future of Nursing. Both of these reports are available. You can download them. Um, you don't have to buy the books, although it's nice to have the books. Uh, and you can download them and um, read about our future. For those of us who are ARP members in the room, the future of nursing is the biggest thing that has happened to us in, a, in our career. And uh, we're so glad that many of you here are nursing students and are, are on the ground as we move nursing and our profession and health forward. So, so the Institute of Medicine impact study found that the campaign has made significant progress in implementing the recommendations of the Future of Nursing report. The Future of Nursing report has galvanized the nursing community, has met or exceeded expectations in many areas, 
But moving forward, the campaign needs to engage a broader network of stakeholders in our work in the areas of scope of practice, education, collaboration and leadership, diversity and data. I'm going to briefly go over the 10 new recommendations uh, from the Future of Nursing Report. And like the first time, the first one is about scope of practice. And the recommendation is to build common ground around scope of practice and other issues in policy and practice. So the campaign needs to build on our successes and work with other health professions groups, policymakers, and the community to build common ground about removing scope of practice restrictions, increasing interprofessional collaboration, and addressing other issues to improve healthcare practice in the instant interest of patients. ARP is a key partner because ARP represents consumers. And ARP works very hard in Virginia and other states to make sure that when there's legislation to remove scope of practice barriers, that it's not interpreted as a nurse versus a physician battle, but it's interpreted as increasing access to care for our patients and their families. The next set of recommendations are around achieving higher level of educations. We need to continue pathways towards increasing the percentage of nurses with a baccalaureate degree so that the nursing education community and the states and the campaign should continue efforts at innovative pathways so it's not so difficult for um, a nurses to get f further education. Recommendation three is to create and fund transition to practice residencies programs. And I was very pleased to see that several of our of, of the exhibitors here today had uh, uh, residency programs because they're fabulous for uh, new graduates and for nurses who are moving into other areas. Um, we need to have more residency programs for nurses moving into community health, home health, um, and other settings. Recommendation four, promote nurses' pursuit of doctoral degrees. Uh, we've had huge success in uh, doubling the, uh, one of the, the first recommendation from the Future of Nursing Report was doubling the number of doctorates. Because of the huge enrollments in doctor of nursing practice programs, that goal has been achieved. Um, then the percentage of nurses uh, enrolling in PhD programs has increased, but not quite as dramatically. And we do need uh, doctors of nursing practice and we do need PhD nurses for uh, education, for practice, uh, and leadership. And the fifth recommendation around education is promoting nurses into professional and lifelong learning. So we need to encourage nursing organizations, education programs, and professional societies as well as individual nurses to make lifelong learning a priority so that nurses are prepared to work in evolving healthcare environments. Lifelong learning should include continuing education that will enable nurses to gain, preserve, and measure the skills needed in a variety of environments and settings in which healthcare will be provided going forward. We know that healthcare is shifting from the hospital environment to the community, and nurses need to engage in lifelong learning to take advantage of this. And I'd like to echo what uh, Jay said about continued competency. And I'm, and I'm preaching to the choir here. I know you're going, you're all here, so you're all lifelong uh, learners. <laughs> Recommendation six is make diversity in the nursing workforce a, a priority. The original Future of Nursing report was criticized because there wasn't a specific recommendation around diversity, and, and the progress report says yes, there needs to be a specific recommendation, that the campaign should continue to emphasize recruitment and retention of a diverse nursing workforce as a major priority for both the national campaign and the state action coalitions. The next set of recommendations are about collaborating and leading in care delivery. Recommendation seven, healthcare professionals from all disciplines should work together in the planning and implementation of strategies for improving healthcare, particularly in an interprofessional and collaborative environment. And that's collaborative in the good sense of the word, respecting each other's professions, working together towards patients. Recommendation eight, 
The campaign should work with payers, healthcare organizations, providers, employers, and regulators to involve nurses in the redesign of care delivery and payment systems. And recommendation nine, the campaign should expand the scope of its communication strategies to connect with a broader, more diverse, consumer-oriented audience and galvanize support at the grassroots level. The campaign, including its state action coalitions, should bolster communication efforts geared beyond the general public and consumers, using messages that go beyond nursing and focus on improving health and health care for consumers and their families. And the last recommendation is to improve workforce data collection. The campaign should promote collaboration among organizations that collect workforce related data. The campaign should play a role in convening, supporting, and promoting collaboration among organizations and associations to consider how we might create more robust data sets and how various data sets can be organized and made available to researchers, policymakers, and planners. We need to collect data on the, the education of nurses. We need to collect um, supply data who are our nurses uh, in, in each setting, and our demand data. Where do we need more nurses? So some of you may have heard that the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation has shifted its focus to building a culture of health for all Americans, which I'll, I'll now focus on. RWJF envisions a future in which we as a nation will strive together to build a culture of health enabling all in our diverse society to build healthier lives now and for generations to come. They want to build a society where getting healthy and staying healthy is a fundamental and guiding social value that helps define American culture. Building a culture of health requires a seismic shift in how this country thinks about health. It means getting people to see health as much more than what happens between them and their clinicians. This means that we need to take a very wide angle view if we are to cultivate and maintain good health for the greatest number of people. So why is RWJF making this change? You all know that our health and healthcare systems face many challenges and our country's demographics are shifting. We have a more diverse population than ever before, and a greater proportion of our population is older today than at any time in the past. Americans are living longer, but sicker, with chronic conditions that require complex care. Heart disease, cancer, and stroke are the leading causes of death. And we learned this morning that Virginia has many challenges. Smoking with the one in five Virginians, a high blood pressure, and physical inactivity. These are areas where Virginia's nurses can make a difference. There's disturbing facts. Um, our Commissioner, Virginia Commissioner of Health spoke this morning about, about specific uh, disturbing facts in Virginia. These are some national disturbing facts. That too many of our children are overweight or obese, and that means that they're facing the specter of a lifetime of chronic disease. In fact, right now, a shocking 75% of America's young adults are too fat, too poorly educated, or too tied up in the criminal justice system to serve in the military. And research warns us that if we don't do something about our kids' weights, weight now, they will be the first generations in American history to live shorter and sicker lives than their parents. We're just going to continue to see more and more diabetes if we don't pay attention to childhood obesity now. So when we look at the big picture of America's health, we aren't as healthy as we think we are. One of every two deaths in this country is linked to chronic disease, and I don't need to tell you that that's too many. We need to improve our system of health care. Remember this morning when our speaker asked us to imagine our community? On the left side of, this, of the screen we have the least healthy counties. On the right side we have the most healthy counties. Imagine your county. 
The Robert Wood Johnson Foundation County Health Rankings show that these problems are compounded if you are poor and a minority. In our country's least healthy counties, twice as many mothers lose their infants to premature death. Twice as many children grow up in poverty. Crime rates are higher. Unemployment is higher. And twice as many teens drop out of school and become parents too soon. On the right side of the screen are America's healthy counties that make it easier for people to get and stay healthy. They have better access to healthy food, parks, and exercise facilities. Most people have access to health care and enough to eat in these counties. They're less likely to end up in the hospital for something that could have been prevented. Geography should not be destiny in one of the wealthiest democracies on earth. And yet, as the Foundation's county health rankings have shown, where you live in America and Virginia has consistent, significant effects on your health. So this is my take home message. Nurses are crucial to building a culture of health. The culture of health frame is critical for nurses. We are the largest segment of the health and healthcare workforce. Nurses will play an instrumental role in building a culture of health, from promoting prevention and wellness, to ensuring clean water and environmental safety, to providing population-focused services to entire communities. The campaign is excited about RWJF's new vision and we are working to make it happen. We need to manage the burden of disease, break the cycle, we need prevention everywhere, and we need to think about health differently. The Virginia Action Coalition is building a culture of health. We have been leading change and we will advance health. Nurses in Virginia and around the country can inspire and help their communities work together to help all people lead the healthiest lives possible. The Virginia Action Coalition is working every day to help Virginians leave, live healthier lives as the campaign strives to transform health and healthcare through nursing. The Virginia Action Coalition is leading change in advancing health. Our voices are many and diverse, and thank you all for staying at the end of the day. I really appreciate it. Now we need to turn our voices into a single resounding voice. Nurses are on the front line of the healthcare profession and have earned and deserve respect. We need an influx of new and energetic nurses who can contribute to the innovative and changing landscape of our profession. We are committed to recruiting and mentoring nurses of different ages, experiences, races, ethnicities, genders, and background to pursue leadership roles. The campaign is making substantial progress in preparing the nursing workforce to take on new roles in the health system and to build a culture of health that enables all in our society to lead healthier lives. But much more needs to be done. It will take all of us, nurses, nursing students, other health professionals, consumers, ARP members, businesses, foundations, and everyone who cares about health care to make this work. You can help build a culture of health by continuing your education no matter what your basic degree will be. Consider becoming nurse faculty and teaching the next generation of nurses or becoming advanced practice registered nurses or public health nurses. You can take on greater roles in primary care. There's huge opportunities for RNs in primary care. You can provide care coordination, chronic care management. You can help patients navigate the complicated health care system. And you could work in public health or community health. If you choose to work at the bedside, you need to understand every aspect of your patient's very complex needs. You will need to pursue lifelong learning as well as an advanced degree. 
Because of the constant changes in the healthcare system and patient demographics, an entry level degree is your entry point. It is up to you to stay current through continuous learning. You owe it to the patients, families, and communities you serve to provide the most up-to-date care. Pursue leadership as you embark on your career. Leadership needs to happen at every level. Speak up at your workplace if you have an idea for improving health. Seek out committees and consider volunteering in the community to broaden your experience. Volunteering also offers a great addition to your resume, especially as you're seeking your first job. Know your areas of expertise and develop your skill set. Strive to serve on boards as your career progresses and enter policy debates. And finally, join and be active in the Virginia Nurses Association <laughs> and the Virginia Action Coalition. You're called to help build a culture of health to enable all to lead healthier lives now and for generations to come. So thank you for all you do and what you will continue to do together. And now I'll take questions. Dr. Brassard, thank you very much for your um, presentation. The content and overview of the report was very helpful. I'm wondering, within the Robert Wood Johnson Foundation Culture of Health Dialogue, if you might be able to comment a little bit on um, nursing policy and leadership around end-of-life advanced directives, um, knowing how we spend such a disproportionate amount of money at the end of life mm -hmm. in the hospitals, um, mm -hmm. caring for patients who don't have have advanced directives. Is that part of this national dialogue of a culture of health to prepare for the end of our life as well? I, uh, I don't know off the top of my head if there's an outcome measure on, en on end of life care. I know there's outcome measures on coordinated care, uh, so that would certainly uh, fit there. Mm -hmm. um, but absolutely. Um, our country spends way too much money on um, futile care that, that patients really don't want, but patients and their families don't know better. Right. Right. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Andre. So we have some giveaways for the end of the day. It's a great day. Been here all, all day, and we're going to give away some things from some of our sponsors, and then we'll recognize our poster presenters. Thank you to all the poster presenters that, that brought forward some uh, knowledge and uh, really disseminating that information out. So from Mutual of Omaha, $50 Outback gift card to... Laura Schwartz. No, that's fine. Thank you. Thank you. And from Legal Shield, $25 Visa gift card to Kathy Rosenbaum. And for our top tweet of the day, well, no, tweeters what they do, but the tweet is what they actually did. The top tweet of the day goes to Marianne at MSTO. What was it? Oh, I don't know. I've been tweeting all night. Hey, I think it was the top tweeter. <laughs> I, I didn't do it. It was the top, so top tweeter. The most tweets for the day, so the top tweeter. Thank you. Yes. <laughs> and thank you to everyone who tweeted. Um, this one is. Um, yeah, I know. Go ahead, laugh, go laugh. This one's from Home Benefits. 
All right, so a gift basket from Home Benefits Melissa. is. Um, yeah. But is it based on the record? And that's one of our affinity partners. Yeah, also, one of our affinity partners goes to Melissa Hotling. Hotling. Uh oh. Last call for Melissa. All uh, right. That's rolls are rolls. Are rolls. <laughs> Got a tell for near. <laughs> Deb. He's oh, building the suspense. Yes. <laughs> well, so am I. Bro. Mm, bro. Mm. <laughs> yes. I believe you. What is? It? What's your last name, Deb? That is definitely you. <laughs> Thank you. Congratulations. And then this is. And for the exhibitor bingo, Yolanda Bledsoe. You want to give these ones? Okay. And then I have one announcement to make, or one question. And don't everyone raise your hands. Did anyone lose some money? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> If you are carrying some money with you and you're not sure, now is the time to check because somebody gave some to me. And we want to make sure to get it back to the right person and if not, it's a lovely gift to the foundation. <laughs> okay, take a look. And if you did approach me um, after we wrap up. So for the best student poster from UVA Medical Center with the poster, Cool the Fires of Burnout, Carol Kate. And for the best overall poster, we actually had a tie. So one will go home with um, go home with the trophy, and the other one will have to get the address, and we'll make sure that we get you an identical trophy as well. But for best poster overall, we have from Bon Secours, Marion Macklin, Effect of High Fidelity Simulation in the Hospital Setting, Pamela Sharp. And from Sentara Williamsburg Regional Medical Center, Interdisciplinary Rounds, Impact on Interprofessional Collaboration, Katherine Smith. If you know Pamela, could you raise your hand? I'm gonna come over and try and get an address from you. No, that was that was Pamela. Okay. No, you have it. All right, perfect. Great. All right, so it's really nice out. So I know you're anxious to get out. Remember that you brought a coat if you did, because it wasn't so nice this morning. <laughs> Um, I also wanted to remind you that April 29 is our spring conference, De-Escalating Violence in the Workplace. Beyond that, I want to say a huge thank you to all of you participating today. I think it was a great day. I hope you all agree. And I hope we see a lot of you working with us and partnering with us on advocacy efforts. Safe travels.